have seen the last video in this series where we had discussed about the understanding of first.cc code in thorough details. We also have mapped the code with the real world scenario to understand it in very easy manner. If someone has missed the previous videos, then I'll ping the link of the playlist in the description box so you can access the previous videos from there. So viewers, today we'll discuss about the packet capture file, which we can observe in the Wireshark. Wireshark is an open source packet analyzer tool which is compatible with Windows, Linux and Mac OS as well. Well, it is used for a variety of purposes, but today we'll just use it for packet observation. If you want a dedicated playlist for the Wireshark, then let me know in the comments so I can start working on it also. So, without wasting time, let's see how we can generate the .pk file and observe it in the Wireshark. We'll use the first.cc file to generate the .pk file and we'll observe. We'll observe the steps that how we can generate the .pk file. So, let's start the video. So here are the steps for generating .pk file for the first .cc file. So the first step is you need to open the first .cc file which is placed inside ns3.37 slash scratch folder. You probably have changed the name of the file. So if you have followed my videos here my file name is my first .cc or you can say my test .cc something like that. You can check your name that whether you have uh, kept the same name or a different name. We just need to write a line of code before simulator run, which is point to point dot enable pcap and in brackets first. This is nothing but your channel's object that you have created above. In future, if you write your code and change the name of the channel's object, then this line will be channel's object name dot enable pcap all and in brackets you need to mention the file name which uh, the file will be generated so the file name would be taken from the brackets that you have passed in as a parameter this line will enable the packet captioning on all nodes which are connected using the links object then this is the second step then we'll run the program which will generate two files inside ns3.37 folder. The file naming conversion will be like first hyphen zero hyphen zero dot pcap and first hyphen one hyphen zero dot pcap. The first is the name as the parameter pass in that line that we have just added and then the zero hyphen zero represent the zeroth node index and zeroth NIC card index. It can be possible that one node may contain more than one NIC. So for each NIC, there will be first hyphen zero hyphen n dot pk file will be generated. So in generalized manner, if there are three nodes and each contains two NIC card, then there will be six files generated starting from first dot zero dot or you can say first hyphen zero hyphen zero up to first hyphen zero hyphen one and then the first index will be one and two that's how the files will be generated and the naming convention will be given so we can easily get that which file is for which nic or you can say which machine now let's open the file for the zero node as you can see as it's a point to point topology so there are only two files generated so in the file for the zero node as you can see that that's it's a client observation or you can say it's a client node so accordingly you can observe the packet flow that first the packet is generated from the client itself and it is receiving the reply uh, afterwards right so this that's how you can open the Wireshark file or you can say pk file in Wireshark and observe the things. As you can see that we have observed the CMD output so this is the same just the difference we are observing from the perspective of the client machine. 
So that's it for today's video. We have seen the steps for the generating the .pk file and observed them in the Wireshark. Hope you like the video. We'll meet in the next video. Till then, keep learning and keep exploring.